What's going on, y'all? It's your man, Supreme, and welcome back to The Real Rap Show. And this is episode 31 of The Real Rap Show, the story of E Money Bags. Now, before we get this episode started, I would like to say thank you to everyone who has been tuning in to the show since day one. Everyone in the comments, all the new subscribers, and also everyone who has been giving me great feedback about the show. Now, let's get this started. Now, originally from Brooklyn, some the projects, Eric Smith, known to the streets as E Money Bags, moved to Left Rack City, Queens to live with his grandmoms in the early 90s. Quickly adapting to the street life in Queens, his name began to circulate on the streets of Queens. Almost more than the dudes who was actually making noise and putting in work in Queens, E Money Bags had reached that level and a lot of real dudes in Queens, like I said, who was putting in that work, who was getting a lot of money, knew about E Money Bags. Around that time in Left Rack also were rappers Capone and Noriega, who knows and has history with E Money Bags. Also around that time in the 90s, a lot of Left Rack dudes was cool with the dudes from Queensbridge. Now, 90s in QB, you had, of course, the rapper Nas and Mob Deep, who had QB on fire at that time. Now, E Money Bags was a known stick up kid, gangster type of dude, man. If you had it, he had it. That's what type of time E Money Bags was on. Now, being in Left Rack and seeing the success of Capone and Noriega, E Money Bags begins to hang out with the dudes from Queensbridge. Like I said, once again, who at that time, Mob Deep, Nas, Infamous Mob, these were the guys who was getting money out of the rap game who had came from the streets in QB. So at this time, E Money Bags starts to hang around these dudes and he's seeing the checks and the cars and the jewelry that these dudes is getting. So he's like, yo, maybe I should start rhyming too because like I'm really out here living the life that y'all dudes is rapping about. So if anybody should be talking about that, it should be me. So he did. He began to do little freestyles and before you know it, he was on freestyles with Nas. He had freestyles with Mob Deep. A lot of Queens rappers that was making noise at that time was fucking with him just off the strength of he was a real dude in the street. We gonna get deep. Hit that like button now. If you know anything about E-Money Bags, tear those comments up. So now, not only does the streets know about E-Money Bags, but now the music industry and these big DJs also now know who E-Money Bags is. And they also know what he's known for on the streets. So having those kind of ties with those kind of rappers at that time who were at the top of the rap game kind of opens the doors a little bit for you, right? But E Money Bags was still involved with the street life and still trying to do the music thing at the same time. But let me take y'all back a little bit. Jay-Z even knows who E Money Bags is. Let me tell y'all about the situation that took place with Jay-Z and E Money Bags. Before Rockefeller, Jay-Z was trying to get his freestyles and his songs in the hands of all these big DJs. Now remember I told y'all, E Money Bags was now running with the dudes from Queens and he knew all these big DJs from Queens, the Stretch Armstrong guys, all those dudes like that. The DJ Clues, E Money Bags had access to these dudes. And Jay Z would try to give E Money Bags his music so E Money Bags could give it to the DJs to put on their mixtapes or play on the radio. Now, as you're listening to this, you might say, How would Jay Z know E Money Bags that early in the game? Like I said, E Money Bags is from Sumner Projects. Jay-Z is from Marcy Projects. These two projects are one block away from each other. And also, 
the person that introduced E Money Bags to Jay Z was the rapper Source Money. You might have heard Source Money on the song Face Off and numerous other freestyles with Jay Z. Source Money is married to E Money Bags first cousin back in the days when e money bags was still in some of the projects him and jay-z got into a little beef now i'm not sure what the beef was about or if e money bags was a stick-up kid back then from what i heard he was so the situation could have been about him not liking jay-z or jay-z might have had some jewelry on that e money bags might have wanted but him and jay-z got into a little beef the beef got debted by Source Money because, like I said, Source Money was married to E Money Bags' first cousin. He was cool with Jay Z through the rap thing. So Source Money got the two together on the phone and debted the beef. Years later, Rockefeller Records is now a full blown label. E Money Bags is still running with the Queens dudes, Mob Deep, Nas those type of guys but there was one night jay-z and his rockefeller crew went up to hot 97 and had a freestyle session live on the air during that freestyle session on hot 97 jay-z's protege memphis bleak introduced his new artist who went by the name of h money bags funk master flex had them rhyming over queen's instrumentals so at the time, while they were live on the air, E Money Bags was with the rapper Prodigy from Mob Deep. And E Money Bags didn't like the fact that someone was using his name. And this person hadn't put in as much work as he did in the street. Also, he didn't like the fact that Jay Z, who knew who he was, would allow someone to call themselves money bags and not tell them, yo, I know someone with that name, you can't use that name. So E Money Bags felt disrespected that Jay Z, for one, didn't tell this dude, you can't use that name. And number two, y'all are on the radio with this dude using my name, rhyming over Queen's instrumentals. So E Money Bags, who is now furious, decides yo i want to talk to this dude like right now so but e money bags knew that he didn't have the connections yet to call the radio station directly and get funk master flex on the phone to get jay-z on the phone the only person that he knew at that time that he was with that had access to hot 97's direct line was prodigy so what he did was he had Prodigy call the radio station's direct line. When Prodigy called, Funkmaster Flex answered the phone. When he heard Prodigy on the other line, everything is cool. So Prodigy says, yo, I want to talk to Jay. Put Jay on the phone. So Funkmaster Flex gives Jay-Z the phone. And when Jay-Z takes the phone, Prodigy gives his phone to E Moneybags. E Money Bags tells Jay Z, Yo, why you got your man up there using my name and y'all rapping over our beats or whatever the case may be? There was a little dispute between Jay Z and E Money Bags on the phone. If I'm not mistaken, I think Jay Z hung up on E Money Bags. So, with E Money Bags being the type of dude that he is in the street, okay, now it's lit because this dude just banged it on me. And this is the same dude that was giving me his music years ago trying to get me to help him. And he got his man up there using my name. So what E Money Bags does, he's so tight that he calls Nas and tells Nas the situation. And he's on the phone with Nas and he's like, yo, when I see your man Jay-Z, I'm going to beat him up. It's on site. So Nas is on the other end of the phone. Like he don't know what's going on. So Nas is trying to calm E Money Bags down and he's like, yo, chill, relax, listen. Let me call this dude and see what's going on. So Nas then calls Jay-Z and asks Jay-Z, yo, what's going on with you and E Money Bags? And Jay-Z tells Nas, well, he just called the radio station flipping on me talking about 
I got somebody using his name or something like that. And Jay-Z said something that was kind of disrespectful that Nas thought was disrespectful. Jay-Z said, yo, we don't even make music for dudes like him. We make music for the dudes that's out here getting money. Basically saying that we not making music for the dudes that's running around out here trying to rob dudes and be stick up kids. Like we make music for the dudes that's in the clubs, driving the nice cars, getting money. Nas didn't like that when Jay-Z said that. So Nas then told Jay-Z, no, listen, we make music for everybody. We don't make music for just one separate type of people in the street. So now Jay-Z and Nas is on the phone with a little back and forth dispute. They end their phone call. Now Nas calls E-Moneybags back and tells E-Moneybags, I just got off the phone with fam and he says some shit like, he don't even make music for dudes like you and he make music for dudes that get money and E Money Bags was a dude that was in the streets getting money that was a known dude so when he found out that Jay said that to Nas it made him even more mad also Nas was kind of disrespected by it because it was like he was kind of disrespecting Queens dudes at the same time to a Queens dude about a Queens dude. Now on Jay-Z's end, Jay-Z felt disrespected by Prodigy because Jay felt like, why would you call the radio station and ask for me with me being at the top of the rap game right now, me being who I am, you call the radio station using your access to ask for me to get me on the phone and then you pass the phone to a notorious stick-up kid that I know, but I don't want to be on the phone with this dude. Like, me and this dude had a situation before. Yeah, you know, he might have tried to help Jay's career, but, you know, Jay probably felt like, yo, that dude ain't do really much for me, so I know who he is in the street, but... I don't want to be talking to him on the phone. So Jay-Z and Nas actually had a little beef before Ether and Takeover. Ether and Takeover was just like the gasoline poured on a fire that had already started burning. The reason why Jay-Z put Prodigy on the Summer Jam screen was because once again, he felt disrespected by Prodigy calling the radio station and putting e-money bags on the phone. Basically saying he's the reason why me and this dude Nas even got beef right now. E-money bags then went on a diss record spree and made numerous freestyles and songs dissing Jay-Z. Jay-Z never responded to it. Jay-Z and e-money bags never saw each other face to face after that situation. There was another group of people who did not like E-Money Bags and was very fond of who he was in the street. And those people were Irv Gotti and Ja Rule from Murder Inc. Records. Weeks later, E-Money Bags wanted to get his hands on a luxury car. There was a girl by the name of Z who had all the connections with getting guys luxury cars at discount prices. This girl Z worked for Supreme, who was the leader of the notorious drug crew, the Supreme Team. E Money Bags gave Z a thousand dollars as a down payment for a certain vehicle that she was supposed to get for him. But Z must have taken too long because E Money Bags decided that he wanted to get his $1,000 back from Z and get a different car from somewhere else. When E Money Bags contacted Z and told her he wanted to get the $1,000 back, she told him that he had to talk to Supreme about that because Supreme told her not to give him anything back. So with E Money Bags being the type of dude that he was, he felt like, I gave my money to you. Why I gotta talk to him for and why is he telling you not to give me my money back? Shortly after the conversation with Z, E Money Bags runs into Supreme on the street somewhere in Queens and he questions Supreme about the $1,000. Now, at this time, Supreme, whose real name is Kenneth McGriff, is running a multi million dollar drug enterprise. 
Supreme knows who E Money Bags is, but at the time, with Supreme getting the amount of money that he was getting, it's like, you know, hit this little dude standing in my face talking about something about a thousand dollars, and he knew that E Money Bags was a stick up kid so supreme was like you know in a way since you want to take stuff from people i'm gonna take something from you now get out of my face i don't know nothing about no thousand dollars so with e money bags being who he was in the street and supreme pretty much telling him you dead on your money e money bags was like y'all know how i give it up out here in these streets and you go stand here and tell me y'all robbing me I and E Money Bags walked off. Now, get in those comments because what I'm about to say is not actual fact, but this is the reason why I think Supreme told E Money Bags he wasn't getting the money back. Because at that time, Irv Gotti was doing a lot of business with Jay Z. And Irv Gotti and Ja Rule didn't fuck with E Money Bags just off the strength of them knowing how he got down in the streets. I don't know if something took place with Irv Gotti and Ja Rule with E-Money Bags, but one thing I'm for sure of is that they didn't fuck with him. And Supreme had Ja Rule and Irv Gotti and Murder Inc. Records in his back pocket. If y'all remember, they put out a movie. The movie was called Crime Partners, based off the Donald Goins novel Crime Partners. Now, if y'all can remember back, Supreme is the reason that the feds tried to take down Murder, Inc. records. Now, back to what I was saying. Somewhere down the line, in a conversation between Irv Gotti and Supreme, E. Money Bags came up in the conversation. And Irv Gotti most likely said something like, yo, he's grimy, he's a stick-up kid, we don't mess with him, my man Jay... He don't mess with him. He don't like him. So that's the reason why I think Supreme decided to rob E-Money Bags for the $1,000 just to kind of show his loyalty for Murder, Inc. and being that Jay-Z was involved in this. A couple of weeks later, E-Money Bags was coming out the Coliseum Mall in Jamaica, Queens when he seen Supreme sitting in a truck with this dude named Black Just. Black Just, who was a member of the Supreme team and also a real known street dude in Queens, was sitting in the passenger side of the SUV. Without wasting no time, E Money Bags pulled out a gun and started shooting at the SUV in broad daylight trying to kill Supreme. But instead of hitting Supreme, E Money Bags shoots and kills black just so for those that know the supreme team these dudes were murderers they didn't play no games they had real dudes with them that didn't tolerate nothing from nobody so now e money bags knew that there was going to be a hit put on him behind him killing black just weeks later e money bags was sitting in his brand new silver lincoln navigator truck on a block in Queens at a cookout when out of nowhere, four dudes ran up on E-Money Bags while he was sitting in his truck and opened fire on the SUV, killing E-Money Bags. Kenneth Supreme McGriff, who is now serving life without parole at Florence, Colorado's ADX, was charged for the murder of E-Money Bags. Shout out to Brooklyn. Shout out to Left Rack City, Queens. Shout out to Queensbridge. Rest in peace to Eric Smith, E Money Bags. Thank you for tuning in. It's your man Supreme. And this was episode 31 of The Real Rap Show The Story of E Money Bags. Subscribe to the channel. Y'all stay safe out there. Real rap.